Okay, so this week you sent in something uh, pretty fascinating. A study all about the Great Pyramid of Giza. I mean, we all know what it looks like, right? This massive ancient structure just kind of sitting out there in the desert. Right. But what the study really asks is what if that's only like a tiny piece of the whole story? Yeah. What if what's inside is actually way more complex and tells a completely different story than what we think? Absolutely. Forget that picture postcard image you have in your head for a second. What we're going to try to do is unpack how cutting edge technology has given us a way to almost peel back the layers of this iconic monument and actually reveal secrets that have been hidden for thousands of years Mm. and it's not just about you know confirming all the old theories but actually maybe rewriting them entirely so your mission should you choose to accept it and you have by sending us the study is to really try to get an understanding of these groundbreaking discoveries without having to go through all those really dense scientific papers right we're doing the deep dive for you pulling out the core insights about the pyramid structure what's inside and its potential functions we're going way beyond just the simple idea of it being a pharaoh's tomb right and the thing that's really going to unlock this hidden world is this fascinating study that uses something called synthetic aperture radar doppler tomography uh-huh it's a mouthful they know it's basically using super sophisticated satellite radar the cosmos sky med system to create a 3d image of the inside of the pyramid think of it like a super powered x-ray yeah but on a monumental scale okay so we've got this advanced tech Now, for centuries, the main understanding of the pyramid, what most people and a lot of Egyptologists believe, is that it was mainly built as a tomb, Mm -hmm. the final resting place for Pharaoh Khufu back around 2550 BCE. But just the scale of it is mind-blowing. Absolutely. About two and a half million granite blocks, each weighing around two and a half tons. Just picturing them moving those blocks is a huge debate in itself. Oh, it is. And even though that whole tomb idea has been the dominant view for so long, it hasn't stopped people like you clearly mm. from thinking, you know, maybe there's more to this. Yeah. We've seen a bunch of alternative theories pop up suggesting that maybe it had other functions, like maybe something to do with resonance or how sound works, acoustics. Yeah. You know, when you're dealing with something so old and so mysterious, it's natural to think outside the box, right? But the problem has always been, how do you investigate those ideas without actually damaging this landmark? Yeah. I mean, at previous methods, there were non-invasive things like using muon spectroscopy, looking at subatomic particles, or actually measuring the variations in gravity. Those have given us hints, yeah. you know? Yeah, glimpses. Yeah, of voids and anomalies. And those were definitely steps forward. You know what's really cool here, though, is that even though those older techniques gave us good info, the resolution, the level of detail they could capture wasn't always super clear. Right. And sometimes how people interpreted that data was up for debate. So this new SAR Doppler tomography is meant to give us a way clearer picture by looking at something completely different. Tiny movements on the surface of the pyramid. Exactly. Yeah. Let me try and give you a clearer picture of how this works. Those satellites send radar signals down to the pyramid. And it's not just about getting a still picture. The technology can actually pick up those tiny vibrations. Wow. The kind that are caused by, you know, distant earthquakes, wind hitting the sides, even the everyday vibrations from a busy city like Cairo. So the pyramid isn't actually perfectly still. It's kind of subtly vibrating constantly. Yeah. And here's where the science gets really interesting. Those super tiny vibrations cause little changes in the radar signal's frequency as it bounces back up to the satellite. This is called the Doppler effect. You know, like when a siren passes you and the pitch changes. Right. The scientists take these teeny tiny frequency shifts and they process them in a really complex way. And what they get is a 3D image of what's going on inside the pyramid. It's like the radar can see through solid rock. By measuring those vibrations. Yeah. That is incredible. Seeing through solid rock just by measuring tiny movements and that high resolution data from the Cosmos SkyMed satellites. That's what makes this kind of detail even possible, right? It's essential. The precision of that data from the Italian satellite system means they can do a way more detailed analysis of those micro movements. So we get a map of the inside that's way more clear and reliable than anything we've had before. So with this high tech vision, what do they see inside? What were some of the really big discoveries that stood out in the study? So one of the most prominent things they found was this thing they call the Eastern Ascending Ramp. It's an inclined ramp, like a slope set at about a 42 degree angle. And it starts at ground level on the north side and goes up about halfway to the top on the south side. And in those 3D images from the tomography, it shows up as a diagonal line with a stronger intensity. Stronger intensity meaning what exactly? It probably means there's a void, like an empty space. Mm -hmm. Or it could be material that's less dense 
than the solid granite blocks around it. It's like finding a less solid spot inside really dense structure. Okay, so that gives us something tangible to picture inside. And there's also something about an eastern descending ramp. Yes. And this one runs parallel to that ascending ramp, but it goes downwards underground. And the interesting thing is the slope of this one seems to change. It's not consistent. The study says that it connects to the ascending ramp, kind of like it's an extension of that diagonal feature, yeah. but just going the opposite way. So instead of a big solid block of stone, we're seeing these internal pathways, like a network inside the pyramid. Yeah. And it's not just these two ramps, right? The study mentioned something about corridors connected to them. Absolutely. The images show connections between the ramps and other spaces inside. Mm -hmm. There's a southern corridor about 90 meters up that they specifically talk about. So these aren't isolated features. They're all part of a bigger system of passages and chambers. And there were even hints about other discoveries, right? Things they didn't detail in the excerpts we saw, like Western ramps, underground complexes, and big voids. It makes it seem like the layout inside is way more intricate than we thought. Exactly. And it's important to remember how detailed all this is. Mm -hmm. The resolution is 0.92 meters. That's less than a meter. So they can map out these features with incredible accuracy. It's not just detecting empty space anymore. Like going from a blurry map to a super detailed blueprint? Amazing. Now, the study also mentioned something about the outside of the pyramid that really surprised me. It might not actually be perfectly four-sided. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, that was a separate but related finding using something called SAR interferometry, or INSAR. It's another radar-based method that lets scientists measure super subtle changes or deformations in the ground or structures over time. In this case, they used it to look at the static shape, and it turns out that Giza pyramids, not just Khufu, but Kefrin and Menkar too, they're not perfect four-sided structures. They actually have eight sides. Eight sides. I've seen so many pictures of them and never noticed that. It's really subtle. Each of the four main faces curves inwards just slightly. You wouldn't really see it with your eyes, especially not from the ground. Yeah. But the satellite data is so precise, it clearly shows this eight-sided shape. Wow, that's fascinating. And they connected this design to how water might have flowed on the surface. Yeah, they think that the shape was designed to control the flow of water along the outside. And this ties in with some older theories about the pyramids being surrounded by water basins. Maybe for ceremonies, or to let boats in, or even to control water levels during rituals. So these new findings, both inside and out, are really making us rethink the old explanations. Let's talk about what they mean. How do these ramps inside support the theories about how the pyramid was actually built? Finding those ramps deep inside definitely supports the idea that they used internal ramps during construction. Mm -hmm. It could explain how they managed to lift and place all those millions of crazy heavy blocks so quickly and precisely. Internal ramps would have given them a gradual controlled way to move stuff upwards as the pyramid got taller. Makes sense. And what about all the chambers and corridors? The study even uses words that make you think of more than just a tomb, like hydraulic systems and resonance chambers. What's the thinking there? That's where things get more speculative, but still really interesting. The idea is that the inside wasn't just about making burial chambers. The way it's all laid out, the connected chambers and corridors, it might have been designed to interact with vibrations in specific ways. Like the whole pyramid was built to resonate with natural energy. Yeah, that's one way to think about it. The hypothesis is that it was engineered to resonate with natural vibrations from the earth and the atmosphere. And maybe the water that might have been inside some of those spaces could have made those effects stronger or changed them somehow. What about that massive granite structure above the king's chamber, the Zed? What role could that have played in all of this? They think the Zed... That huge structure made of granite beams could have acted like a low-pass acoustic filter. It would let certain low-frequency vibrations through, but block the higher ones. And again, any water inside could have amplified things, making the whole system more sensitive to certain frequencies. It's all starting to come together. The eight-sided shape managing water flow outside the possibility of water-filled chambers inside, and the fact that they found boats near the pyramid, it all points to something more than just a tomb. Maybe something to do with water or even technology. That's exactly the direction this research seems to be going in. It challenges the idea that the pyramid was only a tomb. So we have to consider that it might have had multiple functions, more than just housing a sarcophagus. Exactly. Yeah. These findings open up the possibility that it had other uses, maybe for ceremonies or rituals involving sound or even some kind of technology we don't understand yet. And the amazing thing is they discovered all this without damaging the pyramid at all. It's all preserved for future research. That non-invasive part is key. We're not drilling into it or taking it apart. 
It's all done remotely using satellites and physics. So this technology isn't just about rewriting history, is it? Are there other uses for it outside of archaeology? Absolutely. These techniques can be used to monitor modern structures like bridges and dams looking for tiny shifts that might mean there's a problem. And they can be used in geophysics to study natural phenomena. It's amazing that the same principles used to look inside a 4,500-year-old pyramid could help us make sure our modern world is safe and understand our planet better. Exactly. And within archaeology, the potential is huge. This approach could be used on other monuments, not just at Giza, but all over the world. We could get a much better understanding of how these structures were built and what they were really for. Imagine all the secrets we could unlock. It really changes how you see things. So to sum up our deep dive into this study, this new radar tech has given us an amazing look inside the Great Pyramid. We see a surprising amount of complexity with ramps, corridors, and potential voids, and this challenges the traditional idea that it was only a tomb. It seems very likely that it had other functions, maybe involving water acoustics or even advanced construction techniques we hadn't considered before, and it's all thanks to incredible satellite technology. Exactly. It's a shift in perspective. Mm. Instead of a static tomb, the Great Pyramid is starting to look more like a dynamic structure with a complex interior that points to a much more sophisticated understanding of engineering and the natural world than we might have given the ancient Egyptians credit for. When you think about all those intricate structures inside and the fact that the pyramid was probably interacting with natural forces and whereas we're only starting to grasp, it makes you wonder what other things we believe about the ancient world might be wrong. It feels like every time we come up with new tech, we're just scratching the surface of what its builders actually knew and could do. This deep dive has given me a lot to think about. Me too. And hopefully it's made you curious too. This study is just one piece of a much bigger puzzle. And there are definitely more discoveries waiting to be made. It encourages us to look beyond the usual explanations and keep asking questions about the incredible things people did in the past.